Building a multiplayer game was always on the top of my to-do list and I always wanted to do it. And after creating a lot of videos in the Among Us series like the vent system and the imposters mechanic, I finally had a chance to do a multiplayer Among Us by creating the full mechanics of that game. And this awesome video is sponsored by the awesome guys at Heroic Labs to create a community project representing the Among Us game using their Nakamatic knowledge. Thanks for the opportunity and now let's get started on how the game is made, the main systems and showcasing the Nakama technology. But what is Nakama? Nakama basically is a real-time, social, competitive and open-source scalable game server that lets you focus on building the game and not worry about all the backend stuff. It's used by multiple big studios and games all around the world and to be honest it was super easy to use. Not talking that because the video is sponsored but with someone that have a degree in computer science I have some theoretical understanding on how, how multiplayer works but with zero experience in multiplayer games it was easy to pick up, learn and start creating stuff with it in less than a day. Let's get to it. I can't wait. I'm just too excited to share it with you. Like <laughs> let's go. Hi everyone, it's Sir Frederick and welcome to a cool new video showcasing the Nakama technology. A small disclaimer, this video won't be a step-by-step -step code tutorial, but a whole scope case for how the idea and the main mechanics are working in the multiplayer universe. And yeah, the code will be open source and available on my GitHub, I will link it in the description down below. Now, to set up Nakama locally and get it to work with Unity, I followed a small tutorial provided by Heroic Labs on their YouTube channel. It's a really small and a quick tutorial on how to create a 2D action game. It takes you through how to install Unity, how to install Nakama, how to install Docker container and everything and to just how to set the project and how to build the simplest game with it. So if you want to learn that, I've added the link to the description down below. Watch it before diving here and diving in Nakama in general as I will be mentioning how to set it up locally and because if I do that and I like to, it, the video will be like an hour long and it will be way too <laughs> boring. Also, let me know in the comments below if you maybe like you need a really in-depth tutorial how to set everything up. I would gladly do it. Now, creating Among Us or any multiplayer game, we need to strip it down and figure out what are the main parts that we need to create. And mm, because of copyrights, we'll be using another assets to represent the game. I will link in the description below. It's a cool 16x16 dungeon tile set. In Among Us, we have two types of players. We have the crewmates and that want to do tasks and win. And we have the imposters that want to just eliminate all the crewmates and win the game. The crewmates also can av avoid or eliminate the imposters by calling meetings and kick them out of the ship and in our case, in our small castle. By that, we have our main parts to build in this game. Let's recap, completing task for our game is swapped by collecting coins as fast as they can, the imposter will have to eliminate crewmates, it's pretty simple, and the crewmates will have to click call meetings to just kick imposters out, which also the same mechanic as in the big game or Among Us. And to make all of that work, we need a host system with that, coming to our first part of this video, the local host system using Nakama. In Nakama and in multiplayer in general, clients contact with each other through messages. Here, it's in a broadcast fashion. So let's have a small example. Imagine you're sitting in a room and then you have to shout a message and everyone will hear it and do stuff. Also, you can say a name and then shout a message like, hey, Bob, you up? And everyone will start hearing the message and will be like, okay, nah, my name is not Bob. I'll ignore it and move on. But then Bob will hear it and he will be like, ooh, that's my name, that's my name, let's do it. And get your head out of the gutter, it's a family friendly channel. <laughs> but it was really, in games that are free for everyone, they go in, into the room, play, which is okay, and they don't need a host. But in games like Among Us, we really need the host to keep score, a point rolls, like, okay, you're the imposter, you're the crewmate, like, okay, we have five crewmates left, let's keep all of that on record, so on. And what to do? right now is simple. When the room is filled out and ready to start, they all have each other IDs. So they sort it out and choose the first one to be the host. And then they will be like, hey, you're the host, let's start playing. 
and that will all happen in a small function called sethost in our game connection manager and for the client with the same id of the host that has been chosen by everyone in the room we we'll call the awesome script connection host manager and get to work but now let's get back a bit before going deep into how everything is working into deep into the host script we need to understand the hierarchy of the project because it's confusing at the start because all the clients have the same scripts and have the same layout but they behave differently based on their ids and based on the messages they receive so we have now the nakama connection script which is responsible of the nakama stuff connecting the servers and the messages and all of that next we have the game connection controller which is responsible of handling messages and connecting with the server connection or the Nakama connection script so basically they are on each other with direct connection and then all the other main scripts or major scripts in the game including the host controller or the connection host manager script will contact exclusively with the game connection controller making, making that class encapsulate the Nakama connection and do all the function without directly changing the Nakama like logic by any other script back to the host now when it got activated on one client that is in the local host room as I, I have to say it's not a good practice the host has to be in the server and not an actual local computer because that will allow cheating and modifying the information but for now it's good enough for our small example the host will have the list for all the players in the room and he simply start assigning roles at random like hey bob you're an imposter hey jeff you're a crewmate and until everyone gets their roles and activates their right UI and all of that is done, the local player that is playing the host will send a message across the room like hey everyone, let's start playing, they receive these messages, spawn players and start the game in each client. Pretty cool stuff. And, and as we said, the host will have to keep score too, so he has two variables, the crewmate count, the imposter count, when a crewmate dies or an imposter is kicked out of the, of the game, the host will receive a message and we have to go to all clients to be like okay update that player update one has died one has been kicked out and all of this thing but the host will take that message to his room in the connection host manager and see like okay this one has to be an imposter let's decrease the imposter count or vice versa to the crewmate and if any of these counts reach zero he will send a message to everyone else like hey the imposters win because there is no crewmates left or in the instead, instead like okay you kicked all the imposters well done now the crewmates is one pack up your stuff the round is over let's play as a one but also the crewmates can win by completing tasks so the host will keep count of the number of the tasks that have been completed whenever he receives a task completed message and then announce the crewmates are victorious when all the tasks are done yeah it's pretty cool like i can't remove the smile off of my face just explaining all of that and it's all done in a small function called check game end in the, game, in the connection host manager but now with the host and the brain of the match slash room is done we'll have to go into multiple cool other stuff let's continue to the player manager class and this class will spawn all the players on each client after they receive the start match message from the host and it has a list for all the ids of the players so he just like plopping down and also this class is also responsible for like removing any clients or any players when needed but that get us to our second point the types of players we have on each client we have the local player and the server player one of them send data and other receives it yeah it, it's it's nice like first we have the local player controller which gets the player input from on that client and send that position and input as a message to the server with that ID of the player of the client like okay I played my ID is 123 so I send it like okay I'm in this position and that is my ID and that's why we only have one of these on each client second type is the player server controller which present all the other players in the client and all that in one class that holds the ID of that name of that player and also will stay all the time waiting for a message to receive with that id with the controls and the position so he can take action and he will move to the position and apply these controls to the object of the player or the object of the server controller player 
To make it more like understandable, imagine your ID is like 1, 2, 3 and that is your client. So you have a player controller on it and that receive controls and everything. When you move or you do any action, you will send the, uh, that info with that ID 1, 2, 3, each tick to all around the server or just shout it in the room. And then on each other client on that server or connected to that room will have a corresponding player server controller that is spawned with the ID 123. And he will just follow the info in that message that he received. And that is done for all the players in all the clients, one local and all the other server controllers with IDs to all that characters. So basically, it's just like, hi everyone, hi all the bobs move to position 1-1. One, one. Like, and then after like a second, all bobs move to position 1, 2, and so on. So basically, you will have a bob on each client with one original bob on one client. I love saying the name bob. Don't sue me. <laughs> Next, this is the same mechanic we want to use when sending ID when the player is eliminated to the player manager. Like, hi, the ID of 1, 2, 3 has been eliminated. Just remove it and replace that character with a skeleton. So, so just to recap, the player manager script gets the ID list and add all the players to just in the room in each client and is one of them is controllable and send information to all other clients and on each client we have stuff or we have players that will receive information and move based on that. Super cool stuff like when you see everything is working and moving around it just click and it's just amazing like it's simply just you have one robot and just controlling each other robots and other clients with a remote control which is nice now let's move to the other part of the video which is the task stuff in our game i made a small coin spawn around the castle and always two coins spawn at the same time and the crewmates have to go around as fast as they can just collect them and win the game and this is done fairly simple by using the coin spawner manager which have a list of all the places to spawn a coin in and this list is the same at all the clients basically it's all will be the, all, the same game on everyone else and we'll receive messages from the host controller to okay spawn coin at position this and remove coin at another position so when a crewmate collect a coin it will simply send a message for the host that okay i collected a coin please update the task count remove that coin and i have collected it from this position so okay send everything to all the coin spawner messages and all the clients that this position now is empty and spawn another one at random based on your calculation it's a pretty simple logic and execution it's a clear and documented the code i will leave it in the description down below on my github don't forget to check it out next we have the imposters mechanic and this is just copy paste from my last video that I did on my Among Us game. So watching that video will give you a clear idea on how everything is working. And it's all on the client side. So we don't need to contact the host until we eliminate a player. We send a message like, hey host, I eliminated the player with ID 123. And that host will update the crewmates count. Like, okay, one of them has been eliminated. And also all the other clients when he receives the eliminate message. They will send to that player manager okay to remove that player and exchange it with the skeleton of course that player with the id one two three and it's all update like instantly and the killing mechanics or eliminating mechanics and the controlling the button it's all on the client side as i said so basically watching the videos i did way back it's more than enough to understand everything that is working Yep, it's way too many information this far, but it's all weird and cool. Like, I can't believe now how easy it's all in. When you click and you can start working or understanding the interdimensional work between all the clients. Yep, everything will start to make sense soon. Our last part of this puzzle is the meeting mechanic. And as you noticed, the imposter is a normal human on all screens, but a lizard on its own client. And that is the core thing or the core idea of the Among Us game. You simply don't know who to trust. And when someone is eliminated, you have to figure out who eliminated him and call a meeting to vote him out. And because our game is a bit fast paced, you have to go to the, to the middle of the castle, to that chest and call a meeting. Or if you want to add the more like Among Us aesthetics, when you see a skeleton entering the screen, you, you will activate like the call meeting button 
and it's like it's a pretty simple basic unity stuff but now when the meeting is called a message will be sent to the host like hey we're calling a new meeting and he will have to go get everything ready like okay all the ideas will put them in dictionary with like okay this idea has zero voids and so on and get everything ready when everything is ready he sent a message to all clients like okay everyone let's start a meeting everything is ready to keep score of that meeting or the votes and they will open a screen get all the ids and names and put them in a buttons when you click the name of the vote a vote will be sent or will be casted when a vote is casted, a message will be sent all around the room with that ID of the vote and all the clients will update the screens and just update the number but the host will take that ID and update the dictionary with the vote count. So 1, 2, 3 ID will have like now one vote because it has been casted upon him or against him. And the meeting will end when the timer is over or when everyone voted. And after that, the host will go through the list and kick the one with the most votes or if the ties occurs no one will get kicked it's a really interesting mechanic i will not go into the code it's pretty basic it's on my github and if you have any questions you can always ask me either in the comments or on my discord but by this i think i have talked about all the main mechanic and how to make a game like among us using a multiplayer logic and using nakama and in this video is now way too long and so maybe i will add a second version going deeper into the code and yeah let me know in the comments like do you think that that video is necessary and if yes what part of the code is really was really confusing for you and the nakma technology was really easy to work with as i said in the start of the video it really took all the stress of building a multiplayer game and let me focus on the main mechanics that's why like i didn't even mention it right now because it's as simple as connect to the server receive a message send message and that's it the code will be available on my github page as i say it and it will be in the comments or description down below also you can ask me anything you like on my discord my twitter or you can find my email in the about section and to know more about nakama and how it's done and everything around it i would recommend reading the nakama documentation it's an amazing place to find all the details that you require to create your first nakama project also i would recommend going into the heroic labs nakama forum it's an amazing place with a lot of articles and you can ask questions and just have conversation with other developers in the end if you want to, if you have a really specific question and you want to reach developers the, the nakama get your server is always there for you they were all great places to ask questions and learn stuff and the team is very active everywhere which is a huge plus when learning new stuff thanks again for the awesome guys at hero club for sponsoring this video and gave me the opportunity to work on a multiplayer system for the first time and as a newcomer nakama has been great to work with and i'm really looking forward to create more stuff with it and experiment with the new multiplayer knowledge that i got but now, thanks everyone for watching and make sure to follow me on Twitter and join the kingdom over on Discord. And in the end, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you all in the next adventure.